Welcome to the Lennox Guy Guru, and now your host, Jay Benjamin. Hi, my name is Jay Benjamin. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Lennox Guy Guru. Our topic for today's program is playing games in Ubuntu. In this program, I'll discuss games such as Warsaw, Scorch D, Frozen Bubble, Super Tux, Battle for West North, Friction Fire, Flight Gear, Speed Dreams, games for kids, commercial games, Steam, and playing Microsoft's window games as well. A small number of games comes installed by default with standard desktop Ubuntu, mostly simple things to divert your attention for a few minutes between tasks, games such as Solitaire and Sudoku. These games are easy to try out and learn, and you might find them enjoyable. Playing games is a big fun part of computing, for some of us, games are a big part of the appeal of any operating system, at least for uses beyond the business or corporate environment. From the humble card games that entertain millions during their coffee breaks, to the heavily involved first-person shooters that involve players dotted around the globe, Linux offers a quality gaming platform that might surprise you. In this program, we will explore some of the common games available for you to download and install easily in Ubuntu. We'll talk about installing proprietary video drivers. A major gripe of Linux users has been the difficulty involved in getting modern 3D graphics cards to work. Thankfully, both AMD, owner of the now defunct ATI brand, and NVIDIA support Linux, albeit by using closed source drivers. This means that Ubuntu does not ship with native 3D drivers activated for either graphics cards, but they are easily installed, often during or just after the operating system is installed. These drivers are needed for most of the more visually spectacular games. Both NVIDIA and AMD produce proprietary drivers, meaning that the source code is not open or available for outside developers to read or modify. Because of this, it is hard for some Linux distros to include them as part of their standard installation. The Ubuntu community has taken a pragmatic approach of including both NVIDIA and AMD drivers within the main Ubuntu distro, but they're disabled by default. That way, anyone who has NVIDIA or AMD hardware can activate those drivers to take advantage of their features. I will note here, if you think that proprietary drivers are the only way on Linux, we should mention that there is a lot of development going on into providing a totally free and open source driver for slightly older graphics cards. Ubuntu automatically selects the best free driver for your system and allows you to switch to proprietary driver should you want to. Although the open source drivers provide 3D acceleration, this support doesn't always extend to a full feature set or to the more recent graphics cards. And it's easy to activate the proprietary driver if you need to from the dash search for additional drivers. Installing a different hardware driver requires super user privileges, so a confirmation check is run to determine whether you are permitted and then you are asked for your password. After the hardware driver's dialog box is opened, read the description and look for the recommended entry for your hardware. Highlight it and then click activate at the lower right. Ubuntu confirms that you want to use the proprietary driver and if you agree, automatically downloads and configures the relevant driver. If you want to revert to the open driver, then do the same thing but select the activated driver and click remove at the lower right in the place where the previously mentioned activate button was. I will now 
turned my attention to installing games in Ubuntu. Here you'll learn how to install some of the more popular games for Ubuntu, all of which can be easily installed using the Ubuntu Software Center, along with hundreds more listed under games. Alongside the usual shoot 'em up games, you'll also find one or two strategy focused titles as well. The first game we'll talk about is Warso, and it's a free and fast paced first person shooter game that is available on Windows, Mac, OS X, and Linux. Members of the Ubuntu community have packaged the game and make it available directly and easily for Ubuntu users from the software repositories. The game involves quick movements, grabbing power-ups and weapons before your enemies do and trying to plant a bomb and steal your enemy's flag without anyone seeing you. You can jump, dash, dodge, and even wall jump your way through the colorful 3D environment. Warshaw has lots of weapons, platforms, and ramps, and power-ups in sight. There are many other FPS games available such as Alien Arena, Urban Terra, Waltenstein, Enemy Territory, Smoking Guns, World of Padman, Netflix, and Cube, and even Sour Broughton. The next game we'll talk about is Scorch 3D. Scorch 3D is based on an old DOS game called Scorched Earth. The object and gameplay are similar. There are multiple players and you can enter targeting details to try to destroy the other players using a variety of missile-like weapons. You can earn points for each win and can buy new weapons at the end of each round. This time around, there is an amazing array of weapons available and the gameplay is completely in stunning 3D. Scorch 3D is based on turns. Each player shoots once and then all the other players take a shot before the first player shoots again. The game allows you to have more than 20 players at the same time, including both human and computer controlled players. You can play a local game over a local area network or even over the internet. Scorch 3D runs on Windows, Mac OS X, and Linux, so you can play with your friends regardless of what platform their computer uses. The next game we'll discuss is Frozen Bubble. Frozen Bubble is an amusing little game with sharp graphics, nice music, and easy gameplay. You may play alone or against another player. The goal is to use your colored marbles to knock down the ones above you within a certain amount of time. You have to hit at least two at a time that are the same color as the one you shoot for anything to fall. Otherwise, your shot joins the menagerie above and brings your demise somewhere more quickly. There's a lot more to Frozen Bubble, but even with the details, it is easy enough for a child to play and interesting enough to hold the interest of most adults. The next game we'll discuss is Super Tux. Many of us grew up in the era when gameplay was more important than graphics. Even so, we will still like flashy and pretty looking games. Super Tux is a throwback to the Mario era. It is 2D scroller in which you jump, run, and occasionally shoot something if you have the appropriate power up. This time your hero is Tux, the Linux Penguin. More than 25 levels are available as it is a level editor for you to create your own. If you enjoy running, jumping, hitting your head to get money or jumping on your enemies, this game is for you. The next game we'll talk about is Battle for West Noth. One of the most popular games currently available for Linux is Battle for West Noth. It's a strategy game featuring both single and multiplayer options. Based in a fantasy land, you are responsible for building armies to wage war against your foes who are attacking you. Gameplay may be based on scenarios such as in single player mode where some scenarios are pre-installed and others may be easily downloaded or based on trying to better your friends at a LAN party or online. Battle for West North also comes with a map editor that lets you create your own scenarios An active community shares their network and welcomes new contributions. You can find more information about Battle for West North at 
http semicolon forward slash forward slash w-e-s-n-o-t-h dot o-r-g forward slash. The next game we'll discuss is called Frets on Fire. Frets on Fire is similar to games like Guitar Hero. Players try to keep up with the song and play it correctly. It supports songs from Guitar Hero 1 and Guitar Hero 2, and unlike these proprietary games, is expandable by the community, as well as with more songs available for downloads from the internet. The game is completely open source and has content compatible versions for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS X. And the next game we'll discuss is Flight Gear. If you like flight simulators, you should try out Flight Gear. It is cross-platform, sophisticated, and fun. It is completely open sourced and developed by volunteers, but it's also very professional looking and smooth. If you like this, you can also try others such as Thunder and Lightning, GL-117, and Search and Rescue 2. And then there's Speed Dreams. There are many racing games available. One of the newer ones is Speed Dreams, which started as a fork of an older racing game, Torx, T-O-R-C-S. It features a variety of tracks, vehicles, and options. Speed Dreams is open source free and multi-platform. Similar games include Torx, Rigs of Rod, V-Drift, Tile Racer, Trigger, and Mania Drive. And there's also games for kids. Kids, both young and old, are not left out. You can check out some game packages such as G Compress, Child's Play, and Tux Paint to get started. Some of these are educational. Some teach computer skills such as using a mouse or a keyboard, and others are just for amusement. Many developers are also parents who have placed a high priority on making quality software for their children to enjoy on their favorite platforms. You can search for children's games in the Ubuntu Software Center and find lots of great things to try. And then there are commercial games. Something new in the past year or so is that Canonical has made a way for commercial software companies to make their products available for installation in Ubuntu via the Ubuntu Software Center. This includes games, a special section in the Ubuntu Software Center. And that special software center is labeled for purchases, which has been created for you. You can look here for some new and flashy options from commercial vendors. Payment is required, and the details are taken care of within the Ubuntu Software Center. One interesting and cool option is the Humble Indie Bundle from the www.humblebundle.com forward slash, which is a collection of cross-platform software made by independent developers with a pay for what you can, and it has a price tag. These bundles are made available intermittently, and sometimes you can find them available directly from the Ubuntu Software Center. This is a great way to find some fun games with a low cost while feeling good about supporting people who write software for fun. And then there's Steam. Steam is a cross-platform entertainment platform. When you install it on Ubuntu, you get access to a ton of games and other fun things. Some of these are free and many require for you to pay. Steam has grown into the premier source for quality professional games on Linux along with a lot of independent content as well. Steam is created by Valve Software, usually referred to as just Valve, which is a well-established gaming company with a great reputation because of games like Half-Life. Gabe Newell, the co-founder and managing director of Valve, said on September 16, 2013 that Linux is the future of gaming despite its current minuscule share of the market, and the Steam website proclaims Ubuntu as Steam's favorite version of Linux. Steam is Newell's company's means and pursuing that future. If you want to learn more about Valve and about Steam, go to www valvesoftware.com forward slash or you can go to http semicolon forward slash forward slash store s-t-o-r-e dot steam forward slash and what about playing window games 
Well, Ubuntu is primarily aimed at desktop computer users who want a system that is stable, powerful, and easy to use. It is not primarily a gaming platform. In fact, compared to Windows, there are not nearly as many games available or being developed, although the number is growing and has improved. This doesn't mean hardcore gamers need to feel left out. There are two projects that exist to help game lovers play most Windows-based games on Linux. The first is a project called Wine, which uses application interfaces to make Windows programs believe that they are running on a Windows platform and not a Linux platform. Bear in mind that Wine, which is a compatibility layer, stands for Wine, is not an emulator. So do not start thinking of that in that way. The community can get quite touchy about it. Although the open source free software project won't run everything, it does run a very large number of Windows programs including many games. Sedega is a fork of the Wine project that adds more proprietary touches and a focus on games and for a fee allows you to download and use their compatibility layer. And Crossover Games is another commercial option available in the Ubuntu Software Center under For Purchase column. I'd like to give you a tip here. The key to successful gaming in Linux are to always read the documentation thoroughly, always investigate the internet resources thoroughly, and always understand your system. Installing games is a great way to learn about your system because the reward of success is so much fun. So now we'll cover references. The first would be www.linuxgames.com. It's a good source of up-to-date information about the state of Linux gaming. The second place you can go for reference is www.warsow.net and that's the official site for Warsaw. And then there's the official site of Scorch3D, and you can find that at www.scorched3d.co.uk forward slash. Another that we talked about earlier was the official site for Frozen Bubble, and that's www.frozen-bubble.org forward slash. Another site that we mentioned was Supertux. The official site for Supertux is http semicolon forward slash forward slash supertux.letharjik dot org forward slash. And another site we covered was the official site of battle for Westmont, which is http semicolon forward slash forward slash wesnoth dot org forward slash. And one we didn't cover, but I'll give you the URL website for that, is the official site of GCompress, http semicolon forward slash gcompris dot net forward slash. Another one we covered, the official site, is for Frets on Fire, and that would be found at http semicolon forward slash forward slash fret S O N F I R E dot S O U R C E F O R G E dot net. And that's Frets on Fire dot Sourceforge dot net. And while we're at it, we'll give you the official site of Child's Play, and that's HTTP semicolon forward slash forward slash Child's Play dot Sourceforge dot net forward slash I N D E X dot P H P. And here's one that we did cover. The official site of Tux Paint is www.tuxpaint.org forward slash. Another one that we covered was the official site of Flight Gear, which is www.flightgear.org forward slash. And then there's the official site of Speed. Dreams, which is www.speed-dreams.org forward slash. The next one is a very helpful link. It's https semicolon forward slash forward slash help dot 
ubuntu.com forward slash community forward slash games. And this is where you'll find the Ubuntu community documentation for playing games on Ubuntu. I highly recommend checking this site out. And here's a very interesting one that I'll add here. It's HTTP semicolon forward slash forward slash www.cahilig.net forward slash 2011 forward slash 07 forward slash 29 forward slash 100 hyphen BEST hyphen FREE hyphen AND hyphen HIGH hyphen quality Q U A L I T Y hyphen L I N U X hyphen games. And this is great. You'll find blog entries that list over a hundred quality free games. How cool is that? And another that I mentioned would be the official NVIDIA Linux driver support forum, which is www.nd newsnet forward slash v b u l l e t i n forward slash f o r u m d i s p l a y dot p h p question mark f equal sign one four and that would give you the driver support forum and also you can go to the official homepage for the Nvidia Unix forward slash Linux drivers, and that would be at www.nvidia.com forward slash O-B-J-E-C-T forward slash U-N-I-X dot H-T-M-L. And the homepage for the ATI Linux drivers, including drivers for Linux, which would be HTTP semicolon forward slash forward slash support dot amd dot com forward slash us forward slash gp ud o w n l o a d forward slash p a g e s forward slash i n d e x dot a s p x and there's the ubuntu community documentation for wine which is at https semicolon forward slash forward slash h e l p dot U-B-U-N-T-U dot com forward slash C-O-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y forward slash W-I-N-E. And then I'll give you the official site of Wine, which includes good information about software that is known to work with the current version and application database. The subsite is HTTP forward slash forward slash A-P-P-D-B dot W I N E H Q dot O R G forward slash. Their main site would be at www dot W I N E H Q dot O R G forward slash for anything on wine. Very cool stuff. And another that we spoke of was Sedega. The Ubuntu community documentation for Sedega's website is https semicolon forward slash forward slash help dot ubuntu dot com forward slash c o m m u n i t y forward slash c e d e g a. And the last reference I'll throw out there is for the official Trans Gaming Technologies website that provides details of games directly supported on the Sedega, and that's www dot t r a n s g a m ing.com forward slash. I've given out quite a bit of information on gaming websites, so I strongly recommend that you get a pencil and paper handy and jot them all down. It'll be very helpful and useful for your gaming enjoyment. Well, that's our program for today. I hope you have enjoyed the broadcast. Please tell a friend about the Linux Guy Guru. With your participation, we can make this program successful. To my knowledge, there is no other radio program available today that will cover all of the topics discussed here on Blog Talk Radio's The Linux Guy Guru. If you've enjoyed this program, leave us a comment, post a comment. We really would like to hear your feedback. It's very important that we hear feedback regarding this Linux show. 
It is my hope that people from all over the world will tune into this program to learn about Linux and its many operating system distributions. Knowledge is power, and Linux is the key to Internet sovereignty and Internet freedom. Please help us in getting the word out about this important program. Our next program is about command line quick start. You'll learn what the command line is. you learn how to access the command line, user accounts, how to read documentation, understanding the Linux file system hierarchy, and you'll learn how to navigate the Linux file system in our next program, and a whole lot more. And if you'd like to contact the show, you can email us at linuxguyguru at gmail.com. You can also check out our website at linuxguy.guru. We have videos that you can watch. And should you be in the New York City area, we can convert your older Microsoft Windows or Apple computer into a variety of Linux-based operating systems. The possibilities are endless. Well, that's it. That's our show. Till next time. Your host, Jay Benjamin, logging out.